So I think we can start. Good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> uh, welcome to this uh, conference on uh, transport and efficiency energy conversion in quantum system. So first, let me thank the co-organizer of this conference, Jean-Philippe Brantou, uh, Georges Cursan and Heiner Linke. And uh, I just want to say that originally that this conference was, was supposed to was planned to be in presence, then it turned out not to be possible. And so now the schedule uh, is, uh, of the conference has been organized, taking into account the different uh, geographical position of the speakers. Uh, so we decided to start 8 a.m. Uh, in the morning local time and to close not after 1 p.m. Also the duration of the talks uh, has been necessarily compressed. Uh, nevertheless, we think that there is uh, the time is sufficient for the essential part of the message one wants to transmit to the audience. So I think we can start and I leave the microphone to Marcos Rigo, who is the moderator of this first session. Thank you. Okay, good morning. So it's uh, uh, very important for the speakers and the, the audience to keep in mind that it's going to be 20 minutes of a talk plus uh, 10 minutes for discussion. So if you have um, questions of the clarifying type, uh, feel free to ask them during the talk. Otherwise, postpone all discussion questions to the end of the, the talk. So we have an exciting uh, group of speakers in the morning uh, for us <laughs> here in California. And our first speaker is uh, Masahito Ueda, and he's gonna be telling us about non-equilibrium control of many body systems beyond the Hermitian framework of quantum physics. Masahito, please. Thank you very much, uh, Marcos. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for the very kind invitation and for, for allowing, allowing me for this remote presentation. The quantum physics is usually discussed within the Hermitian framework, However, new possibilities emerge once we go beyond it. In this talk, I will argue why and uh, what new physics we can expect. So these are my collaborators who are my former and present group members. The following presentation is a summary of what I learned through fruitful discussion with them. There are two prototypical situations where Hamishian physics does a job. One is isolated quantum systems, which are described by Hamishian Hamiltonians. The other is systems interacting with environments, who, which are described by Hamishian system bath Hamiltonians. There are, on the other hand, situations where beyond Hamishian quantum physics play crucial roles. This is when quantum measurement is involved. In this case, information about the system is read out by an observer, and hence unitary dynamics breaks down. In this case, the state evolution is non-unitary and cannot be described by Hermitian physics. As such non-unitary operations have been employed in the AMO physics. The left two panels show progressive state reduction of the cavity photon field due to measurement back action. The right two panels show progressive state reduction of atomic positions with diffraction unlimited resolution. Furthermore, the development of quantum gas microscope has revolutionized our view about many body physics, which can now be investigated at this single atom resolution. At such high resolution, Heisenberg's uncertainty in relation can no, no longer be ignored. The higher the resolution, the greater the measurement back action will be. We expect that the many body dynamics and the quantum phase transitions will be altered by measurement back action. It is clear that the quantum statistical mechanics will be altered by measurement back action. This presents a new frontier of beyond Hamishian quantum physics. An important subcategory of beyond Hamishian quantum physics is so-called non-Hamishian physics. There are two important cases in which quantum jumps can be ignored and hence non-Hamishian description is justified. One is coherent optics, 
This is because a coherent state is an eigenstate of the annihilation operator and hence invariant against quantum gems. Another example is Bose-Einstein condensates. In this case, the annihilation operator decreases the number of atoms by just one. However, the off-diagonal long-range order remains almost unaltered by this change since the number of atoms n is much larger than one. Let us now discuss the physical consequences of beyond Hamishian physics from the viewpoint of renormalization group and quantum phase transitions. The first example is the non Hamishian Kondo effect. The experimental realization of the Kondo effect was reported with other cold atoms. In this experiment, Itelebim 173 atoms with nuclear spin degrees of freedom were trapped in an optical lattice. Here, the majority atoms are in the ground state and the excited atom plays the role of impurity. While the condo effect was not observed in this experiment, spin exchange dynamics has, between free fermions and impurity atoms were indeed observed. Here, an atomic loss was observed due to inelastic scattering between the ground state and the impurity state. And then a natural question arises as to whether one can observe the condo effect in the presence of inelastic collisions. So atomic loss due to inelastic collisions can be described by the Lindblad master equation. Here, L is a jump operator that describes quantum jumps. By substituting the concrete Lindblad operators corresponding to the inelastic collisions channels, we can obtain this uh, non Hamishian condom model. So, so this model with a complex value of the condo coupling J. So J is now complex due to the atomic loss. So to realize non Hamishian dynamics, we first prepare all atoms in the ground state, so leftmost panel, and then a small fraction of, of atoms are excited to the excited states by laser radiation. So in the YB systems, uh, the ground state atoms will be excited to 3P state. The excited atoms behave as impurities of the condo systems. As time goes on, some impurity atoms are lost due to inelastic collisions. Around the surviving atoms, the condo singlet should be formed. So this panel schematically illustrates the quantum trajectory dynamics of surviving impurity. An excited impurity evolves in time according to non-Hamishian quantum Hamiltonian until a loss event takes place here at the quantum jump. And the impurity atom is then annihilated. Thus, the dynamics of surviving impurity is described by the non Hamishian Kondo Hamiltonian. We analyze this phenomena by using the renormalization group. The renormalization group flow is governed by this familiar expression. In the Hamishian case, where the Kondo coupling is real, the RG flow moves from free fixed point to toward the antiferromagnetic coupling, and eventually reaches a strong coupling condo fixed point. So this is a condo single point. Okay, so in, in the non Hamishian case, where the condo coupling is complex, RG flow develops on the complex plane and can move in the uh, imaginary axis direction as well, like this panel. So if the atomic loss is small, then the flow initially uh, moves away from the real axis, but eventually arrives at the condo point. So, so like, like this traces this circle. However, if the atomic loss is above a critical point, 
then the RG flow traces a loop and return to the free fixed point like this. Physically, this implies that the condo singlet is not formed. So if the loss is below a certain point, then the flow moves this way and eventually reaches a condo fixed point. So, so in this uh, reversion case, uh, we can say that RG flow reversion means that infrared fixed point coincides the ultraviolet fixed point. We thus obtain a non hamishian quantum phase transition that is caused by inelastic collisions. So such reversion of an RG flow is prohibited in Hamishian systems. In fact, according to a G theorem, the ground set of degeneracy must decrease along the RG flow. Reversion of RG flow violates the G theorem, offering a unique feature of non-Hamishian system. So next, uh, we argue that non hamishian hermeticity alters the fundamental nature of continuous phase transition, quantum phase transition. In fact, continuous phase transition can occur without gap closing in this case. So in Hamishian systems, quantum phase transitions are accompanied by either gap closing or continuous phase transition, or level crossing for the first order quantum phase transition. The gap closing uh, causes a singularity in the fidelity susceptibility. This divergence is a signature of the usual quantum phase transition. In non-Hamishian systems, the fidelity susceptibility could also diverge from non-orthogonality of eigenstates. So eigenstates are orthogonal for Hamishian systems, but this is not the case for non hamishian case. So to see this, let us consider the fidelity susceptibility F uh, against a small change in the coupling constant lambda here. So for Hamishian Hamiltonians, this here is a double sum M and N reduces to a single sum due to orthogonality of against this. In this case, singularity arises only when the gap closes, so when the denominator is zero. However, for non Hamishian Hamiltonians, eigenstates are not orthogonal to each other, and this double sum can cause divergence of the fidelity, susceptibility without gap closing. As a concrete example, let us consider non Hamishian Tori code model where a one half spin is placed on every edge of a, of a square lattice. The Hamiltonian con consists of the vertex terms and the bracket ones. Each bracket term is a product of four power Z matrices on, on four edges of a bracket. And the vertex term is a product of four power beta matrices, where power beta is a non Hamishian linear combination of power X and the power y and describes an asymmetric spin flip where beta parameterizes the strength of no hermeticity. So, so there is spin flip is uh, asymmetric. And this model reduces to the Hamishian toy code model at beta equal to zero. So this model uh, is actually related to the Hamishian toy code model via this uh, similarity transformation is. Therefore, the eigenstates, uh, eigenenergies of the two modes are the same. In particular, this model has a non-zero excitation gap and the ground state is fourfold degenerate on the torus. At beta is zero, the ground state is a, is a quantum spin repeat with zero magnetization and the topological order. When increasing beta, the spin imbalance increases and the ground state becomes magnetized and the topologically trivial. We therefore expect a quantum phase transition at some beta, even though the system remains gapful for any value of beta. So to show this uh, explicitly, we consider topological entanglement entropy 
which is a constant correction gamma to the area low entanglement entropy L and characterizes a universality class of topological order. According to Castellanov and Shaman, gamma is log two below the critical point and gamma is zero above it. Therefore, there must indeed be a quantum phase transition at beta is beta C. A local observable takes on the same expectation value for topologically degenerate uh, ground states. This panel shows the difference of magnetization between each ground state and the fixed ground state beta. Uh, the difference is almost zero here in this region, almost zero, uh, below the threshold indicating local indistinguishability and hence a topological phase. The difference is non-zero above this threshold, this threshold indicating local indistinguishability and hence a topological, non-trivial phase, a topological phase. It is non-zero non above, the non-zeroness above the threshold indicates a local distinguishability and hence a to topologically trivial phase. The right panel uh, indeed shows that the magnetic susceptibility, which is proportional to the fidelity susceptibility, susceptibility and indeed diverges at the transition point. So, so there is indeed a topo uh, quantum phase transition without gap crossing. So this is what I wanted to talk about no Hamishan quantum physics. And indeed, uh, since because of the time, uh, I limit myself to two topics, but there are actually uh, many interesting topics about if we go beyond a topological, uh, beyond Hamishan framework, for example, within the Hamishan framework, topological phases are 10, according to Arthur and Silenbauer. But once we go beyond that, then uh, the number of classification amounts to 38. So as, as discussed, this symmetry classification and the magnetism can be inverted between ferromagnetism and antiferromagnetism in a dissipative Hubbard model. Yes, and uh, today I ignore the effect of quantum jumps. And if we take into account quantum jumps, then, then the physics becomes a single trajectory thermodynamics and uh, how the system uh, summarizes along the single trajectory is also interesting. And the comprehensive review is given by this recent uh, advances of in physics review article. So thank you very much for the kind attention. Okay, thank you, uh, Masahito. So we have uh, plenty of time for uh, discussions or questions. Can I ask a question? Uh, hi, yes. Oh, hello. Very nice to see you. Uh, I, 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 I have a question about susceptibility. I know like in equilibrium, it also can be expressed for non-equal time correlation functions. And physically this divergence basically means that there is this extra slow dynamics. Uh, and does it work in non-Hermitian case in this similar way? I, I, do you know? You mean, you mean a slow dynamics? Yeah, because uh, in, in, in Hermitian case, susceptibility can be, fidel susceptibility can be written as some um, uh, integral of a basically non-equal time correlation function, right? And so it divergence means that you have like very long tail when time goes to infinity. So I, see. And I, I don't know whether it's, uh, and basically in, in non-Hermitian case, you just replace, you go to lemon representation or undo lemon representation an energy denominator becomes like time integral. And then you immediately see it's basically a non-equal time correlation function integrated over time. Uh, and did, do you know if it's the same here? 
I'm not aware of such events, but but I think there must be there can be similar effects. Uh, it's it's only a matter of time scale, and if the time scale is not significantly modified by the loss events, then we could expect similar similar uh, phenomena. But but as, at, at this moment, I'm not aware of such effect. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have another question from Rosario Fazio. Yeah, hi. So uh, I wanted to ask, uh, um, is it possible to do adiabatic computation using non-emission dynamics? Oh, I, I think this is the interesting question. So yes, uh, we can do non-adiabatic uh, process uh, but there is one one limitation. Uh, that is that uh, once the quantum jumps occurs, then then adiabaticity breaks down. So so I, I would expect that in the non-Hamiltonian framework it would become uh, harder to to perform non-Hamiltonian uh, adiabatic computation because of the presence of quantum jump. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jorge, do you have a question? Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, very nice talk. Uh, so, for the condom model, you actually uh, motivated this non hermitian uh, uh, dynamics because you can just look at the uh, impurities that have survived. Is there yes. also a similar motivation for the other model, the Tori code? Is a simple construction of the non hermitian by kind of ignoring uh, jump terms in, in some sort of obvious way? Uh, well, uh, it, you, in general, not. Uh, this condo issue is, is nice because we can only focus on the surviving atoms. So, so jump events uh, actually do not harm the essential physics. But, but usually, uh, no hermeticity is okay as, as long as quantum jumps can be ignored. Yeah, so, so so many interesting phenomena in non hamish physics actually are, are not do not survive. But there are on, uh, two exceptions to this rule, as as I discussed. So, so one is the co coherent optics, uh, because the coherent state is the eigenstate of this annihilation operator. So quantum jumps does not alter the physics at all. So, th so this is why no, a majority of non-Hamishian physics uh, have been observed in optics. Another, I think, is interesting uh, non-Hamishian physics can be observed in Bose-Einstein condensation, where the loss can be induced artificially. And, and in this case, uh, quantum jumps indeed decreases the number of atoms by one. But, but uh, since n is large, so off the long range order, which is the essential feature of both and condensation, can remain uh, little affected by this event, by this event. Mm -hmm. so, so we can look for interesting non Hamishian uh, dynamics in these two systems. Mm -hmm. Just a quick follow-up question. Can you think of uh, any instance of a uh, um, um, quantum phase transition once you even include uh, the jumps, or these quantum phase transitions are kind of uh, exclusive to the absence of the jumps. Okay. Uh, well, one one thing that quantum jumps can play a positive role uh, is is it can be found in in AMO physics where we can utilize a dark state. So, so using the dark state, the state will jump into uh, the state will jump into the dark state, which is then protected. And and uh, there are several examples uh, uh, where those dark states usually have very interesting features. So, so actually, there are indeed uh, situations where we, where quantum jumps can be harnessed, yeah, to to protect or to induce the quantum systems into such interesting dark states. Yes. Thank you. Okay, okay. Leonid. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it was a very dense talk. Um, and perhaps I have a very naive question. <clears throat> so uh, with this quantum uh, 
in uh, uh, well in the simple pictures that in solid state is used it's Anderson impurity model <clears throat> and then you start just having uh, separate I would say degrees of freedom uh, which is spin of the um, uh, of the electron and uh, and the number which may be zero or one actually or, or two even but let's look at zero and one uh, and then uh, in physical situations basically uh, uh, the electron may hop on discrete level and create a quantum impurity or it may hop off and there is no impurity so uh, basically to describe the loss if you wish of electron from um, quantum state or from the Hamiltonian from the state where you could describe the system is uh, Hamiltonian you need another degree of freedom which is the equation number basically zero or one yes. um, so um, here you somehow have a non-permission Hamiltonian where everything is encoded uh, in the uh, in the exchange integral which uh, I think uh, is not happening or at least is not usually utilized uh, in uh, in the rendition of the quantum problem that I just uh, described. So can you explain please how um, how you arrive to a Hamiltonian with uh, complex J for the system you consider? Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for this very important questions. So in this case, uh, I have in mind uh, atomic uh, AMO systems uh, Y Ethereum step one seventy three, and this is a atom which has only nuclear spin, so not electronic spins. And if we we shine, so suppose that all atoms are in the ground state, uh, hyperfine manifold, and we shine laser to excite some of those YB atoms into an electronic excited state. So that is a triplet P3 state, which has a long lived uh, state. Uh, the lifetime is as long as a few seconds, which is almost infinite time in, in AMO uh, sense. So those excited atoms will play a role of impurities. So as long as they decay into the ground state, uh, those excited atoms will play a role of impurities for for the surrounding ground state atoms. And then this is how the Conde effect uh, enters in significant. So right. And then, yeah. and then you'll have uh, exchange that is there. If, if you say that lifetime is forever, then it will be the exchange that is there, uh, just a real exchange. Which is forever, uh, but now yes. somehow you uh, somehow you came up with the Hamiltonian, which is not efficient and has complex value of J. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, so Actually, how do you get the imaginary? Uh, yeah, well, the imaginary part uh, arises because of the finite lifetime of this excited state. So eventually, uh, excited state will recombine in, into the ground state at at, at some significant uh, probability, and this part. Uh, contributes to the imaginary part to the quantum coupling. So, so we what we actually do is we anti-symmetrize this combined systems, ground state and excited states. Uh, and by considering the fact that excited states has a non-zero lifetime, then then the quantum coupling constant uh, will acquire some imaginary part. So, so this is the physics. So this I, Ji, represents uh, the lifetime of electronic excited states, 3P0 uh, state. Right, which would be an analog of what I'm saying about electrons that jumps out from the impurity. So, yes. okay, okay, I, I understood your answer, I'm not sure that I, I understood what you're saying. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I see it's uh, time to get started with the next speaker. So let's thank Masahito again. Thank you. Thank you very much.